Greetings, and welcome to part 12 of the flute series. This one is focusing on um, what to do after you finish Essential Elements Book 1. By now, you've gotten your gold belt in band karate. I'm very proud of you, especially if you're one of my 4th and 5th grade band students. That means that you've finished all of the 4th and 5th grade curriculum. You're really playing at that 6th grade level now. Um, and then for me, it's all gravy after this. Now we just keep pushing and pushing and seeing how far we can get you. It's very exciting. To get this far takes a lot of work, and again, I'm very proud of you. So the first thing I want you to do is ask your parents to purchase Essential Elements for Band, Flute, Book 2. It's very similar to Book 1, except it's uh, red at the top and it says Book 2. It's a continuation of the series. It's um, learning more new notes, more new rhythms, all that stuff. So get that book, get a head start. It's Sweet Home. We use that book starting in 6th grade, uh, so it gives you a chance to get a head start on that. While you're waiting for that book to come in, I would encourage you to go through book one and all the exercises that you haven't done, play through those, okay? Uh, it's a good sight reading challenge. Sight reading is playing things you've never seen before. So remember, look at those things like your time signature, your key signature, your tempo markings, dynamics, some of those concepts, accents and such, which you might not have done quite so much with when you were going through it the first time. You might be like, wow, I can do this a lot easier now. So that's the uh, next thing I would encourage you to do. <clears throat> Once you finish book one with me also, I would encourage you, if you're one of my students, uh, to get in contact with me for an all-county solo. In New York State, we have a festival it, um, in January where I get to send some top students uh, to play a solo. In sixth grade, you're allowed to pick if you want to do it or not. In fourth and fifth grade, I choose students based on criteria and uh, getting to a certain amount of the book. Uh, so you can ask for one of those solos, and they get harder and harder and harder. You can work on it. It's a great way to learn some new things and a whole piece of music. It's really nice. Plus, when you go there, you're adjudicated by a professional musician, a professional flute player who knows the instrument so much better than me. Okay? I'm a band teacher. Okay? My role is to be able to teach kids uh, how to play their instrument. Okay? But that's like 10 different instruments for me. Um, so it's really impossible for any band teacher to be amazing at any uh, at all ten instruments. Myself, I'm a trumpet player, and I can teach all the elementary instruments uh, and to a pretty good degree. Uh, but trumpet is really my focus. I'll teach private students trumpets from other schools as well. But I wouldn't teach a private flute um, flute student. But my band kids, I can do fine. Um, so that adjudicator is going to be able to help you. Um, with some techniques that, you know, the finer points that maybe I can't teach you as well. Um, which another thing would be great is if your parents are open to the idea, uh, perhaps you could do a private flute teacher. There are many professional uh, flautists in the area that take on private students. Uh, and again, it's a great way to bolster, uh, bolster your skills and take you to that next level of fluting. All right, good. Uh, one other thing that you can do is on page 46 and 47 in your book, there's a flute fingering chart. Uh, what I would encourage you to do is look at this fingering chart. Start on maybe a B flat, okay? On the, look on 46, the third line, the bottom line of notes, the third note in. That's the A sharp slash B flat and harmonic tones, right? A sharp and B flat, same note. And I would encourage you to learn all these notes going down and going up. It gets you familiar with it. It gets you used to playing even higher notes and lower notes. It just builds that range. So I'm going to try it. And again, I'm not a professional flautist. Uh, and I don't need all these notes for teaching elementary kids. So I've only gone through the, all of the notes in the book once. So let's see how this goes. Starting on B flat and going down. <laughs> Are you proud of me? I am. All right, now I'm going to start on the B flat, and I'm going to go up. It's going to be a little rougher. <clears throat> Notice that for uh, that B flat, there's two fingerings for it. Uh, use the top one for now. But what that is, is the alternate fingering for B flat is, remember that thumb key that we didn't press? If you press that one uh, in the first finger in the pinky, and you don't push this one down, that's another B flat. That's another fingering for it. So learn it. Uh, 
So that's the high C. That's the note we went up to in the book. All right, I'm there. All right, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to start on that C again. See how high I can get. That's the high G. I'm going to keep going. I put it on the G sharp. But you might be able to get that G, uh, the, the, all the way up to that high C. If I worked at it by the end of the week, I could hit that high C pretty well, I'm sure. So for you, the same thing. Every day, practice these notes. See how high you can get, how low you can get. And then when you get to a point where it's just not coming, that's okay. The next day, try it again. And eventually you'll find that you'll get that range up. Okay, so we talked about getting book two, playing through all the things you didn't play through in book one, getting it all counting solo, um, possibly thinking about getting a private flute teacher for you, and then playing through the fingering chart. So those things should keep you going for a while. Again, getting through this, all of the, the Gold Belt songs, very proud of you. Keep up the good work, and we'll see you later.